Okay, so let's continue our discussion of the education of Augie Morasti and look at chapter three. Uh, it's called The Passion of Sister Felicity. So uh, the first uh, question uh, that I ask, so why does Augie think there was a men's side and a woman's side to the building? So I'm referring to page 17 where Augie describes the complex, the residential school, the environment where there was sort of strict rules against um, any fraternization or um, relationships between men and women. So he says, whenever the nuns went anywhere out of the school, whether to go to the graveyard, half a mile away or across the river, they always traveled in groups to protect themselves from harm. Our complex was a very large building, five floors in all, one side for males and one for girls and nuns. Inside the school with all of us in our classes, uh, when a nun decided to fetch something or work on the boys' side, she was always accompanied by one or two older girls, presumably to avoid molestation or worse. This was the, the sister superior's rule. No sister would walk alone around any part of the men's section at any time. So there's this kind of idea or fear um, and rule uh, to, to prevent any kind of... Um, of you know inappropriate relationship from occurring between men and women and uh, this is part of the kind of uh, Christian or Catholic belief of um, that to be in a have that status as a nun or a sister you have to be celibate and uh, protect your virginity um, and all and take a vow of celibacy in your service to God. You're essentially, I think, married to God is what they were uh, perceived as. And then uh, you're not supposed to have a sort of human relationship with a man at any point in your life or as, as long as you're, you know, promised to God. Um, but I think in this implied in this description and the separation between men and women there, they also imply that maybe it's the nuns that are, you know, fearful of the boys, the older boys, who they think they're gonna, you know, attack them, assault them, molest them, um, if they're walking alone. Uh, so it's it's kind of ironic, I think, that they they fear the children um, rather than the children fearing them because they were the ones inflicting so much pain and, and punishment on the children. Um, so there's sort of an irony there uh, in terms of this fear. Uh, and avoiding the children uh, or avoiding the boys and men. And Augie says, you know, that part of this separation between the men's side and the women's side was this rule. He says, uh, no hanky panky. They were all human beings and they all had human feelings and weaknesses. So he's saying, uh, you know, to create this very strict. Um, or follow the very strict, you know, doctrine of the church. Uh, there shouldn't be any sexual relationships going on uh, between any of the, the the administrators or the instructors. Uh, so to avoid that, they separated men and women. Uh, but he was saying they're all humans, and all humans are given to their weaknesses, and we're all sexual beings. Um, so no one is immune from their their sexuality is basically what he's trying to get at there um and then you know there are some strict uh beliefs uh in uh catholicism where you take a vow of celibacy or or your sexuality is sort of um you know if you if you take a vow of celibacy is part of your uh status or authority, uh, becoming a father or brother or sister uh, of the church, uh, you take this vow of celibacy and it was supposed to sort of put, place you on a higher moral ground um, and make you a sort of special person. Um, but we could see another layer of the hypocrisy when we see the abuse and the rampant sexuality that was going on below the surface. Uh, so even if they presented themselves as as very celibate and holy and righteous, 
Um, that's not what was going on in reality. Um, so he describes Sister St. Felicity as one of the, the sisters who had taken a vow of celibacy, but that's not how she behaved uh, behind closed doors, basically. Um, so there was a lot of uh, hypocrisy in terms of that uh, instance, and in not just her, but other of the brothers and sisters who also went against this vow of celibacy um, <coughs> when they were on their own time. So he describes uh, Sister Felicity's uh, ethnicity. So she, he says, um, uh, once I spent the whole afternoon with Sister St. Felicity, who, by the way, was part, was part Indian, she was at my school when it opened in 1927. Later, she went to the Medicine Hat Nuns Academy and came back around 1942 to join the other nuns at St. Therese. Uh, so she was once a student of the school, uh, and then she returned later as a nun uh, to the school. Her cultural background, uh, she can speak Cree to the children, um, and she speaks fluent uh, Cree. Uh, so this gives her a kind of relatability to the students because she, of her shared uh, cultural background. So she's sort of um, relatable or uh, there is this bond or connection culturally uh, between her and the students and uh, Augie has sort of um, he felt a kind of connection with her uh, but she has a temptation so he describes how uh, she kind of has repressed sexual feelings that come out um, even though that she's taken this vow of celibacy to become a sister and uh, he describes this relationship that they had um, where she tries to seduce uh, Augie uh, when he was around the age of 14. So he's still a child. She's, you know, a grown woman. Um, and she's kind of going to use her position of authority uh, and try to seduce Augie into a kind of sexual relationship in this scene. Um, but it all becomes, it's very sort of, um, I guess, it, it shows her as kind of both uh, a, a relatable person, uh, but also kind of you feel sorry for her, but at the same time she is kind of a sexual predator as well uh, in the scene, preying on Augie, and, who's only 14 years old, and taking advantage of her, her position of authority. Um, and you know, trying to engage in this, in a very inappropriate sexual relationship with a student. And as it turns out, uh, she has done this repeatedly uh, in her career as a nun. Um, so she kind of uh, it becomes apparent to Augie that uh, she had, she had, you know, done this with his uncle as well. Uh, that you know she kind of preys on on the vulnerable students and takes advantage of them sexually. Um, so she is you know in a contradictory position or a hypocrite in this regard that she presents herself as very moral and dutiful and chaste and celibate, uh, but behind closed doors she is um, sexually aggressive and uh, even preying on. Uh, a child like a pedophile would. So she essentially abuses her power in her relationship with Augie and the other male students um, that she's tried to seduce and she tries to get Augie to sort of engage in sexual uh, behavior with her and um, she she promises to give Augie uh, candy and treats and favor him if he goes along with it. But as he describes, uh, he, he was kind of victimized uh, in his vulnerability. 
Um, he says, just like before, oh no, well, he says, he, he kind of, uh, basically she, she tries to get him to engage in a kind of sexual act, um, rubbing her with his hand. Um, she tries to grab his genitals and he's embarrassed and stands up and, and kind of tries to get out of the situation. Um, and then he says, I, I like, I still liked her and respected her, but now in a different way. And she always favored me for some reason, maybe thought I was an easy mark. And as before, she asked my teacher if she could work with me someplace. Um, when I think about it at that time, I wish it would happen again right now. I guess I hesitated for too long. Um, in that line, he, he kind of, you know, as an adult, he thinks back of it and, and it's almost like he's wishing that, you know, he could have been a man in that situation rather than just a 14 year old boy. Um, and then maybe, you know, the sexual relationship would have been more on an equal ground um, and he could have, you know, had his way if you, you know, they could have had a sexual affair. But in the situation, as he describes it, she, he's still a child and she's an adult. Uh, so it is a kind of a, a situation of abuse, not just of, of sex. Um, so he says, uh, I finally mustered enough courage to pull my hand back and stood up. I told her I had to go to the washroom. She had a face as red as a beet, almost apologetic. She said to me with tears in her eyes, be a good boy. You're the best. Please swear that none of this is told to anyone. I'll do you lots of favors. I'll get you candies, food, and I'll carry your letters and your friends love letters. But if you tell anyone about this, no one will believe you. It will have a drastic consequences and probably get a big rebuttal from some of the other nuns. I'm sorry the devil almost got the best of me, she added. Thank God nothing more happened and please keep your promise. Uh, so she does, you know, she promises him all these candies and treats and stuff like that. But she's also kind of threatening him in that sentence when he says, you know, if you ever tell anybody about this, it's going to have drastic consequences. That's a threat. Um, so... She is, she knows that what she did was wrong and uh, she's trying to sort of uh, get herself out of trouble and she wants to keep Augie quiet basically so he doesn't say anything about what's happened. Uh, she doesn't get in trouble and he doesn't really tell anybody about that. So this is one of the first um, instances where we get uh, the sexual abuse that is going on in residential schools. Um, but he does, at the end of this chapter, convey this that he kind of feels sorry for her, or forgives her uh, for her behavior towards him that afternoon. Um, so he says, so we, I'm, I'm asking, you know, why might Augie speak about this woman in kind terms rather than harsh words? Do you think he regrets not engaging in a sexual relationship with her? Uh, I do think that he like maybe thinks about her in um, in a more you know rose colored lens uh, in a nice way, uh, but she is basically a sexual predator in her actions toward a child, and uh, he thinks that you know it, had he been a man, it would have been a different scene, but um, because he was a child, this was you know. In, in a very inappropriate um, situation.